What is it about the ocean that can calm us one moment and then excite us the next? Is it our connection? Is it the sound? Why are we so swayed by its charisma? It comes down to one word, tone. And much like the ocean, a host is the one to set the tone of a show. Comedians, actors, and musicians have all stepped into the role, but much like any art form, there's a craft to hosting. It's time to pull back the curtain and put our host center stage. The lights are up, the mic is hot, it's time to set the tone. Welcome to Set the Tone. I'm your host, Aaron Smalls, and I've had the privilege of hosting hundreds of live events and TV shows across the world. And a couple of questions that I get asked pretty often are, how'd you get this job? Or how can I do what you're doing? And well, I never really have an answer for it. So I decided to call some friends who have made a successful career in the industry as host. And we're gonna take a look at their journey and find out how their talent, energy, and charisma shapes events. Eugene, Oregon, small town with a population of about 170,000 people. Comparatively, Houston, Texas has a population of about 2.3 million. So how does a local news anchor from Eugene, Oregon become one of the main live event hosts for Super Bowl 51 in Houston? Well, we're gonna find out from someone who's taken their talent from local to live. It's my good friend, new mother, and an amazing talent. Please welcome to the stage, Angela. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The people love you. They adore you. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah, I feel like my daughter doesn't adore me right now, as you said, new mom. So it's good to know people adore me. How's new mom life been? It's uh, something that I've never thought I could accomplish, and I don't feel still like I can't accomplish it. I am going day by day and, you know, learning, and it's been a challenge, but it's been fun. It's been a fun balance, especially during quarantine. Angela, you got to take me through the story a little bit. Okay. You started in Eugene, Oregon, and then how did you even get into everything in the very beginning? When I started out, I wanted to be a reporter. I wanted to be in local news. I wanted to tell people's story. I'm super nosy, so it was just like perfect. Ever since I was little, I knew what I wanted to do. I got the job in Oregon. I was in Eugene and also on the coast. We had a bureau on the coast. I was able to see a lot of this state. And it was amazing, but it was also something that it wasn't really satisfying me through the early mornings that you have to wake up until the seven days a week, almost all day. They really grind you when you're in like that first kind of market. So after I left from doing local morning news, I moved into sports. And then I found a gentleman named Rossi Morale. He posted something about how he was looking for people to take to Super Bowl. I was like, amazing, perfect move. It was Super Bowl 50 and in San Francisco. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for this. Let's see, let's see what he's looking for. Auditioned for him, kind of went through my background with him and said I did a little bit of live hosting because at the Super Bowl, it's live in front of an audience, not in front of a camera. I was like, yeah, you know, I worked for MTV and um, MLB and I did some like concert series live. Like I can host live, no big deal. It is a whole different world. And once he took me to Super Bowl 50, I was thrown out there, literally thrown out there to the wolves because it's in front of other people. And I was addicted. Then I got to Houston the next year. I felt a little more seasoned and thank goodness because Houston was epic. Like <laughs> Energy can be manipulated in a lot of different ways, and a host that knows how to use these methods can make the difference between a good host and a great host. Now, Angela, you've talked about the tone of your voice being a great skill to have, and instead of talking about it, I'm gonna have you demonstrate it in a couple different ways. So at this point, Angela, it's time for you to set the tone. All right, everyone, it is about that time. Let's make some noise for Aaron Smalls. <laughs> Get a little excited. All right, let's do a different version of that. It's about that time. Let's make some noise for Aaron Smalls. One or two? Which one do you like? Woof. <laughs> that 
that is in, intense. <laughs> Were they a little different? Uh, the, there was definitely some variation. So explain to the audience that's watching kind of the difference between the two. So I think in this kind of setting, you, it's very obvious how different the two were in a, um, like we're talking about a live event outside or even in a large convention center. It's a little bit harder, but you know you don't like one and you're kind of trying to figure out why you don't. So the first one, a slower pace, I kind of like went from a little bit quiet to getting excited was building it rather than am i going up because i want you here at the end the and so that was one thing but then with that first one i also was using my abdomen my diaphragm breathing from lower it's a similar skill kind of in music with where the music is coming from so that it's not shrill or it's not nasal or it's not very high pitched um so then in the second one <laughs> one I, I i think when i'm assuming and even before i went and started doing live that if you are so loud everyone's gonna be hype with you and that was probably brutal to hear right now because you think that you need to be up here so everyone can be so excited and then you're in your nose and it sounds so sharp and everyone get excited for Aaron smalls and they're like no i just want you to stop talking i don't want to get excited for Aaron smalls like it's there's a big difference and it's from here to here, and rather than being up here the whole time, I want to bring you up to the top. That's kind of a misconception with hosting, is that your energy doesn't always have to be way up here. Yeah. Because it's it's comparable to a, a roller coaster. If a roller coaster was just up and down, up and down, up and down, it would kind of get anticlimactic, which is why you have the turns and the loops and uh, the ups and the downs and the small drops and the big drops. And it's kind of the same thing with the energy and especially with your vocal tones and your inflection, because it, typically the higher tones will cut through and they're more piercing, but they can also be more irritating. The lower tones are more soothing, but again, it's the same kind of a concept of, uh, you've got to have the low tones with the high tones to kind of blend, making that, that perfect time on the microphone. Exactly, and even when you are at that high part, we're not saying you need to be high pitched in your nasally head voice. So thank you, Angela, for demonstrating a little bit of what you do and highlighting a very important hosting skill, vocal tone and inflection and how that can affect an audience. Now that we've seen a little example of what you do, we're gonna find out a little bit more about you after this break. Welcome back to Set the Tone. This is the show where we get to find out how unique personalities have used their charisma and their talents as a host to make a sustainable career out of it in the entertainment industry. Angela, here we are getting to know you. I'm calling you Angela, but is that your real name? <laughs> Great question. Uh, my name is Angela Lauren Stewart, and starting my career, I used, just used my beginning and middle name. So I go on as Angela Lauren. And where are you originally from? I'm originally from Northern California. Is Eugene where you originally got into hosting or where did you get into hosting? I went to college in San Francisco. I went to San Francisco State, amazing broadcast school. Um, I had the best experience um, working in newsrooms and like internships and just even at the school itself, we had our own news station. And my first jump was to um, KBEL in Eugene, Oregon, CBS up there. And that bounced, like I said, me from Eugene to the coast in Coos Bay. And yeah, that's kind of where it all began. And market 21, 121? Oh gosh, I don't know. But you want, that number is so important because you're like, ooh, I'm climbing the ladder and I want to get to market one, New York. So here's a tricky question for you because you've talked about local news, which is broadcast journalism. Uh, then you kind of get into entertainment journalism, which is like your E and your red carpet kind of uh, hosting. Uh, then you also have the live. There's so many different aspects of it. 
So how would you define a host? That is such a great question. I've been actually really thinking about that a lot lately. I think a host is someone that is going to steer the ship and get you to your goal. And that is if you're in studio or if you are out and seeing live. You've kind of touched on it a little bit. What kind of skills do you think you need to have in order to be a host? Confidence, 100% confidence. You, anytime you can tell that a little bit of like you're feeling insecure sneaks in, they can tell. So you just have to know exactly why you're there, exactly that you know you know what you're doing. You just have to be confident. They could sniff it like it's blood in the water. If you are unsure and you're just kind of, well, do you guys want to play this game? Oh, well, do you like me? No, 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 no. No one is going to follow that ship that you're leading if you're not confident. So through your journey here, you kind of started, we've, we've coined the phrase local to live. Uh, <laughs> did you want to be a host? Was that something that you wanted to be or did you feel like over time you were kind of directed uh, down that path? Yes and no. I, I, every time someone asks me, like, how did you go from A to B? I say it's because I didn't have my eyes set on B. Like I knew what I wanted to do, but I also was very open to other things coming my way. And I think that's extremely important because since I was little, I would tell my parents I wanted to be a reporter. I wanted to be an anchor. I wanted to do local news. That is the dream. I didn't know anything about live hosting. And if I didn't have my, if I had blinders on, I would have never realized that actually sports reporting was really important to me. And I really wanted to do that and interviewing and that's really where you get those stories of something of, about people and then i was able to marry that with like being in front of people and live hosting and to me it's keeping your eyes open to all things because they like i said there's something about live hosting that's really gets it going for me and makes me so excited and i didn't even know it really existed i just assumed it was in front of the camera, your local news, and you talked like this, and I am Angela Lauren, and welcome to, you know, it's it's different now. There's so many different ways to be a host, especially because you can create your own content like you are right now, and I just give people advice of don't put your blinders up. Say, feel out everything that comes your way. That's definitely a good philosophy there. And I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of funny that you did um, kind of a newscaster kind of <laughs> voice there. <laughs> I'm going to add something into this because I think it's interesting. I think there are a lot of maybe stereotypes for hosts and what they sound like. Can you do a couple of impressions of what hosts actually sound like? So one is your broadcaster. Okay. Let's do a second one is a cruise director or a game show host. And as the third one, we've got to do the strip club DJ MC, we've got to do those three. Okay. This might be the most entertaining part of all of this because also I'm horrible at impressions, so this is just the way I would do them. <laughs> okay, so good morning, I'm Angela Lauren, and this is your local news at seven. Let's take a look outside at the local weather. So it's very da -da -da, da -da -da. it's okay. gonna rain. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's jump into the, let's jump into the second one now. Your cruise director or game show host, the stereotypical, what do they sound like? Oh God, this one's gonna be really bad. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, welcome to uh, Let's Set the Toad. I'm Angela Lauren and let's see who's gonna be a winner today. <laughs> That's great. You, Angela, you are the winner and everyone watching at home are the winners for getting you to start. Are all right, let's move into the third and final one because it's it's just the voice that everyone tends to do when they think about DJs or strip club DJs. So, uh, give it to us. All right, party people, people, people let's make some noise, noise. Let's go. Honey. Honey. <laughs> That's the stripper's name. <laughs> honey, wet with honey. All right. <laughs> All right, so Honey, you went with Honey for the final one. That was fantastic. We're gonna stray away from that because that can definitely be a, uh, a sticky situation with some people that are in the hosting world. Uh, so I guess my next question would be for you, as you were coming up in broadcast and in hosting with live, did you have any mentors that kind of guided you or coached you? 
I have a lot of my, I was really lucky where I went to school. Um, like I said, we were able to, so I was in San Francisco and it's very small, a lot of people there, but very small, seven by seven miles. You have a lot of great news stations there and a lot of the news talent anchors were professors. So Marty Gonzalez was a really big um, influence in my career. He was actually one of, he was my um, sports uh, broadcast um, professor and he was just so confident and cool and also Michelle Kennedy she was another one that she was young and relatable and made me feel like I didn't have to act so mature and proper and I could truly be myself because that's what you hear a lot you want to make sure you're yourself and act like you're talking to your best friend and that's a little hard when you also feel like you need to play a role and speak a certain tone and a certain pace and just trying to find your authentic self that's a great word for it, your authentic self. Yeah. And that, that's yeah. a very, that's a huge difference between maybe the music world or the acting world or being a radio DJ or radio talk show host is you, you have something to kind of hide behind, kind of a safe bubble there uh, that you don't necessarily have to be your authentic self. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier that you're with a company called Event Host Live is there do you have mentors in in that group or are you still learning to have mentors now absolutely 100 percent. love him love to fight with him love to hear his advice rossi morale is hands down so incredibly talented and he's the reason why i got into live and he's the reason why i felt confident doing it he's the reason why i love constructive criticism because he can tell you like it is and like uh -uh, what are you doing why are you doing that and can't get your feelings hurt you're like all right this is what i need to do and go and I think that is with the confidence that you uh, know and trust the person that's helping you and like guiding you and growing in this new venture that I entered. And he has been in front of the camera. He's been behind the camera. He like he is the live host, host extraordinaire. Been doing it for years, and he is definitely one person that has really made me feel really comfortable um, being a live host. And speaking of being comfortable as a live host or going out on the stage, do you ever get nervous or scared before you oh get God. to the camera or before you get on stage? Absolutely, I always say if you do not get nervous, that means you don't care. Like if you're not a little uncomfortable and oh my gosh, I hope this goes well. And I, I, if you're not nervous, that means you don't care and you're not gonna care giving the information or guiding that ship that I was talking about. Like you. The nerves are a good thing. They're butterflies of your excitement. I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. And you are a new mother, a relatively new mother by, by the time that we were doing this taping. You'll be well into it by the time it airs. Uh, <laughs> and that's a pretty big landmark. That's a pretty big achievement. Uh, what are some of your big landmarks or milestones or achievements in the hosting world? I definitely would say, first up, my internship. I always stress, even to like, I have a younger sibling, I'm like, your internship in whatever you do, really make it important, make it into something that's going to guide you to where you want to go. Because my internship in San Francisco was at CBS and I, they in enjoyed what I was doing and respected what I was doing as an intern. And they would just send me out with a camera guy to go cover some pretty iconic, um, and 49er players, Raiders, just myself, camera guy, and I'm an intern that's in college. So for me, that was huge because that was the beginning of that confidence. That was definitely a start. And of course, like getting the first job because with that comes a lot of bruises. That's kind of where you got to start. You are a, what it's called a one man band. You're shooting, editing your own stuff. You're writing your own stuff. Um, so that was a huge accomplishment to get through that boot camp. And then making such a big move to New York and to work for Major League Baseball, I'm a huge baseball fan, um, and MTV. My co-hosts were Sway, uh, Fat Joe, <laughs> uh, there, and a couple of comedians. So you've done what sounds like a lot of really great events and you've worked with some really cool celebrities and sports figures. During your time with any of these events, have you ever felt not good enough? Yes because I think that's the, the nerves. Um, I think that's where comparison comes in. I always recommend rewatching your tape and really dissecting it, but also 
with a little bit of ease. Like don't be like you can be critical on yourself and how you need to work, but not be critical about like, oh well, this hair was out of that way, and oh that person has nicer hair than me or less wrinkles or younger, or whatever it may be. I think that's where it gets sticky. And experience really is the greatest teacher for all of this now in the industry compared to when you first started? Are there things that you maybe wish you knew back then or? It's such a different game. Like when I started out, you sent your tapes out. Not, I'm not that old, I sent out VHSs, I sent out CDs. A quick disclaimer, a VHS is a tape about yay big that they used to put film on, you used to put it into a machine and that's how you would watch movies and TV shows and cartoons. Now everything is digital but that's what a VHS was. It's a different game and that is the beauty about it. I, back then would say, do your time. Do your time, do the market jumps, put in the work. Now definitely still put the work in and don't think you're gonna be this star the next day, but like create your content, create however path you wanna go, whatever path you wanna go without your blinders on, just make sure you are getting the reps in. Angela, we really have learned a whole lot about you and the entertainment industry, specifically about hosting, uh, while we've reflected on your journey. But now it's time to put your industry knowledge to the test with a trivia game I like to call, Are You Sure? So Angela, I'm going to ask you a industry-related trivia question. Once you give me the answer to your question, uh, I will ask you, Are You Sure? You'll then lock in your answer by saying your answer and the words, I'm sure. After that, I'll let you know if you are correct or if you are incorrect. Okay. <laughs> Seems like you understand the rules. Angela, you ready to play? Ready to play. All right, Angela, here is your question. Who was the first woman to win a daytime Emmy for outstanding host of a game or audience participation show? I'm going to go with the one, the only... Barbara Walters? Are you sure? Barbara Walters, I am sure. Oh, she's locked it in. How confident are you that that's the right answer? Uh, you know, I love me some Barbara Walters. I know that she has done it all. So I just wanted to say her name. The answer was not Barbara Walters. It was America's hero, Betty White. Oh, what? It was Betty White. <laughs> yeah, she won it for oh. a... Uh, uh, a game show called Just Men. It was Betty White. Oh, that's a good question. I didn't even know she hosted a game show. That's amazing. And that is one of the points of this show, to teach people <laughs> more about the industry. But speaking of the industry, Angela, this is what you do. You ask trivia questions, you play games, you do all kinds of uh, stuff like this all the time. So we're going to flip this script right now. I'm going to pass you the mic to ask me a question in part do of Are You Sure? So passing the mic to you. Wayne Brady is the current host for Let's Make a Deal. Before the revival of the show, who was the original host? Oh, who was the original host of Let's Make a Deal? I'm trying to think of my host here. You've got Johnny Carson, Jack Parr, Steve Allen. I'm gonna go with Johnny Carson because I don't have an answer. I don't know who it is. Aaron, are you sure? Johnny Carson, I'm sure. The original host of Let's Make a Deal was Monty Hall. Monty was, Hall. I felt like you were gonna know that one. I know you know your host, so I'm glad I could stump you. Now I've learned something more about hosting <laughs> and the industry. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna move into our very next section where I have 10 final questions that I want to ask you. Here we go, Angela. As we start to move towards the end of this show, I want to ask you 10 final questions. And when you answer these questions, let it be the first thought or the first word that kind of pops in to okay. your head. Okay. Here we go. Your very first question is, what's one word that describes what you do? Entertain. I wanted to say guide. That was my next one because I said guide. But let's go with... Guide entertain. <laughs> What's one word or phrase that describes what people think you do? Yell. What do you most look forward to about an event? The energy. What do you least look forward to about an event? The bad energy. What's the most rewarding thing about what you do? 
just making people smile, just getting them to enjoy. That's, that's why you're there. It's not about the host. It's about the audience that came to see the show that's about to happen. If you couldn't do what you do now, what else would you attempt to do? I wish I would say something super cool, like play some sport, but I've been told a lot this past couple months that I should really get into marketing. I'm glad you said marketing and not strip club MC because uh, <laughs> that was not, that was, how will you know you made it? When I am fully satisfied and I, whatever satisfied means, that's literally the first thing that came to my mind, but um, I've made it when I'm happy at home, in my family, in my relationship, and in my career. 25 years from now, what will you want people to say about you as a talent? That I was kind and easy to talk to. Your final question here is, I am a host or I host because blank. I am a host because I want to guide you into an awesome experience. I thrive off of that. Fascinating answers that you had there. Um, I know it's a lot to think about and some things that you have never thought about. But I want to thank you so much for being here. And you're a host as well. So I'm just going to throw it to you so you can close out uh, the show for us. Awesome. Well, Erin, thank you so much for having me on your show. You're doing great things here. I've learned a ton about hosting, and I hope everyone at home has as well. If you want to follow my journey, you can follow me at Angela Lauren one that's the number one, on Instagram and on Twitter. And make sure you follow Be The Change USA on Facebook and Set The Tone TV on Instagram, IG for full episodes and highlights. I'm Angela Lauren. Thanks for watching. Set the tone. Well, there you have it. A truly unique personality. I'm excited to share another guest journey with you on our next episode as we learn more about the craft of hosting. I'm your host, Aaron Smalls, and we'll see you next time when the lights are up, the mic is hot, and we set the tone.